In this video, we're going to talk about integration by parts. After U substitution, this is the most important technique for computing indefinite integrals. So we're going to work on a particular example, and we're going to think, you know, think our way through that. And in the process, we're going to develop the formulas for integration by parts. And then we're going to see how this particular example fits into the general formulas. So suppose we want to figure out the integral of x times e to the x dx. Well, we know what the integral of x is. That's x squared over 2 plus a constant. And we know that the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x plus a constant. Great. So all we need is a power law for integrals. But there is none. There is no power rule for integrals. Just because you know the integral of x and you know the integral of e to the x doesn't mean you know the integral of x times e to the x. So we need plan b. And our plan b is going to be to guess a function whose derivative isn't exactly x e to the x. It's just close to x e to the x. So if we can guess a function, let's call it capital F of x, whose derivative is x e to the x plus some other stuff. It's close. Then we just subtract off a function whose derivative is the other stuff. And then we'll be golden. So since e to the x is a function whose derivative is e to the x, you might think x times e to the x would be a good function for getting x times e to the x. You know, if the x comes along for the ride. Of course, it doesn't come for along for the ride. The real rule for derivatives is that the derivative of x times e to the x, we have the product rule. It's x times the derivative of e to the x plus the derivative of x times e to the x. And that gives you x e to the x plus e to the x. And this is what we wanted. We wanted x e to the x. And this is our extra stuff. Now, can we think of a function whose derivative is e to the x to subtract off? Sure, you know that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So if we subtract off e to the x from the thing we're taking the derivative of, we get x e to the x plus e to the x minus e to the x. These cancel. And that just gives us x e to the x, which is what we wanted. So we're done. The integral of x e to the x is x e to the x minus e to the x plus a constant. Now, you might be grumbling that, you know, guessing is, isn't a method because, after all, I didn't tell you how to guess in general. So I'll tell you how to guess in general. The technique is whenever you want to integrate a function times the derivative of a second function, you can always guess the product, f of, g, f of x times g of x. And then you compute the derivative of f of x times g of x using the product rule. And the derivative of f of x times g of x is f of x times g prime plus g of x times f prime. And the first term is what you want, and the second is extra. So then you have to subtract off something whose derivative is g of x times f prime. In other words, you have to subtract off the integral of g of x times f prime dx. So the derivative of f of x, g of x, minus the integral of g times f prime dx is f g prime plus g f prime minus g f prime. These two cancel, and you get f times g prime. So, in other words, the integral of f times g prime dx is f times g minus the integral of g times f prime. And this doesn't look like we've gained anything. We started off with one integral, and we wound up with another integral. But if you did it right, this integral is easier than the one you started with. In our example, we started with x e to the x, and we wound up with the integral of e to the x. We started with something we couldn't handle. We wound up with something we could handle. We won. Now, there's a shorthand for all this, so we don't have to keep writing f's and f primes and g's and g primes. The shorthand is instead of writing f of x, we just call it u. This is much like what we did in u substitution. And so du is f prime of x dx. Instead of writing g, 
we write v. Instead of writing g of x, we write v. And dv is g prime of x dx. So our integration by parts formula was f times g prime dx, the integral of that, is f times g minus the integral of g f prime dx. But in terms of u and v, it becomes just the integral of u dv. This is u. This is dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. So this is the shorthand formula. Very useful. Okay. Again, integration by parts does not solve your problem directly. It doesn't tell you the answer right away because you still have to do the second integral. But it replaces an integral that might be too hard for you with an integral that hopefully is easier. So let's go back and see how that worked with our particular example. In our particular example, we had x e to the x dx. And x was our u, and e to the x dx was our dv. So if x is u, what's du? Well, the derivative of x is 1, so we have 1 dx. And if dv is e to the x dx, well, what's a function whose derivative is e to the x? That's just e to the x. Now, we could have taken e to the x plus 7, but that's needlessly complicated. We usually pick the simplest antiderivative. And then we say, huh, integral of u dv, that's what we started with. That's the integral of x e to the x dx. That's hard. But the integral of v du, that's just the integral of e to the x dx. That's easy. So we write integral of u dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. So that's x e to the x minus e to the x plus a constant. Put a box around it. We're done. 